Do I feel like I'm sitting lower than you? Do you feel like you're higher? I mean, I'm short, so. Boys, welcome back to another episode of the Cut Down Podcast, and we are kicking back today, and it's another episode where me and Dalton are just going to chat about some things. We have a lot going on. I just got back from vacation literally today, a few hours ago. I thought you got back last night. No, like 3.30 this morning. Oh my God. So technically this morning felt like last night, but it was also 12.30 California time. So yeah, so a lot to talk about. I want to talk a little bit about vacation, and we had an epic sports world. Uh, or Epic Sports Weekend um, with college football, with NFL. And so I just wanted to dive in, talk to you a little bit about it. Um, and so let's let's jump right in, my man. Did you follow a lot of, what do you want to talk about vacation first? Yeah, let's talk yeah. about my vacation Yeah, first. so where'd you go? What'd you do? Who'd yep. you go with? Um, so me, my wife, my daughter, we went out to California where we met up with our friends, Lawson and Tiffany. And they have a couple of houses out there with her family. And so we spent portion of the time in San Diego, portion of the time in the desert. So it, I, I kept saying Arizona, I told a lot of clients, I'm going to Arizona, I'm going to Arizona. It wasn't technically Arizona, it was like Palm Springs area, um, but it was absolutely beautiful. Have you ever been out there before? I've been to Arizona. Uh, I've been to San Diego and LA just once, um, but never like, we didn't really go explore or yeah. anything like that. It was. Yeah. We so went out for like a spring. I had went before and it was only for Lawson's wedding, actually. Um, and it was a couple of years ago we went down there. It was in San Diego, but we were there for like four or five days. And it was just, you have wedding festivities. You know, you're running around, you're doing things. I was in the wedding, so I was a part of all the rehearsals and all that stuff. And so you, we had a couple of days to do a little bit of sightseeing, but the most of the time, the majority of the trip was just doing wedding festivities. So this was a nice time to go actually do a lot more sightseeing, a lot more visiting, and a lot more just absolutely relaxing. So yeah, it was a good time. We, uh, you've been to Joshua Street? I haven't. No. Yeah, dude. Have you seen pictures? I, I've seen pictures and I've like seen it in movies and TV yeah, shows and stuff. Absolutely beautiful. Like I don't even know what I imagined going into it, but it was way more beautiful, immaculate than I even imagined. Like how what was kind of what was really grabbing you in it doesn't feel real like the views there are just like you you see them on calendars you see them on website backgrounds but like to actually be there you're like i'm literally standing in those pictures that i saw that's it's it's immaculate and like i have a bunch of pictures i'll show you maybe we'll pop some on the screen here um but we did skull rock i don't know if you ever heard of skull rock okay let me let me let me slow down here so joshua's tree is two different deserts and it's where they directly meet and so it's the colorado desert and the mojave desert okay Okay. and so we went in through the back way which it was really dead i was like man there's nobody out here coming through the back i guess it was the back way it was colorado side of it it's not actual colorado but the colorado desert side of it and but when we got to the mojave side it was popping there was so many people it was pictures everyone's driving around people are on campers out in the middle of nowhere it's really cool but uh, so we come in through the Colorado side and this side is a lot more deserty, a lot more, you can't, it's not as much green. It's a lot more dry. You can see the mountains, beautiful, um, but a lot of just dirt, sand, but it's epic, absolutely beautiful. And so I'm glad we went in that side first though, because I think if we had went on the Mojave Desert side first and then got to that side, we would have got kind of bored toward the end. Um, but starting off on that side, it was really good because we're like, man, this is beautiful. You see the mountains, you see everything. As you come across, you start to see when you cross over into the Mojave Desert, it becomes a whole lot more life, a whole lot more green, a whole lot more trees, a whole lot more flowers, a whole lot more cactuses. Uh, and then they have these rock formations that are huge. I mean, just piles and piles of these ginormous rocks. Like, I don't even know how to describe it besides showing you a picture. I, I don't know if I have all the pictures. My wife took a lot of them because I was doing a lot of the driving. But when I say there's these rock formations, dude, like there are just these absolute- Whoa giant rocks just like stacked on top of each other and you're like how in the world like they almost seem perfectly shaped together yeah like how is that even possible exactly so like there's and like right there boom look at that so you've got you've got the mountains in the background but then you have just these giant rock formations that are right there in front of you absolutely beautiful there's this one spot it was called there was a couple little like flowery like little patches there um that were literally like cactus fields pretty much just and they were beautiful in my house showed those pictures as well um but there's one spice called skull rock and it literally looks like the shape of a skull into the rock like it is so weird i think my wife i don't think i have a picture of my, my wife definitely posted some on instagram 
Let me see, I'm gonna pull this up. But this was one of the spots where we actually got out and walked around a little bit. Most of the time we just stayed in the car. Yeah, I must have been on your story because it's not it's not popping up here. Anyways, you can pull up Google Images. I'll send it to you later. But yeah, um, yeah, Skull Rock, literally the outline. And you have all these trails. People literally will just, there was little campsites in the middle of nowhere where you just drive down this road and there's just nothing. And you just see a bunch of tents and campers and people are just walking through. And my wife is like, I would never do that. But yeah, actually pretty cool. And it was just absolutely beautiful. Just taking in, you know, like we have the Smoky Mountains, which are beautiful. Um, and that's one of the things that I love about Tennessee, but it's just the out there is completely different, man. And it just, it gives you a real grasp of the world. You know what I mean? You, you're, you're here and you're so focused on your everyday life. And then you get to kind of go out there and just see those views and everything. And you're just like, man, this, it's a beautiful world, man. It's a beautiful so world. Do they have, you mentioned the Smoky Mountains. My, my one gripe with the Smoky Mountains is that it's been so like commercialized that there's so many like, I don't know, you know, Hatfield and McCoy, family yeah. dinner, comedy yeah. show, stuff like that. That's really fun to go and do, especially like on the parkway in Pigeon Forge and yeah. the strip in Gatlinburg, right? And there's a lot of fun family entertainment type stuff there that I feel like almost takes away yeah. from like the majesty of yeah. the Smoky Mountains. Is it kind of like that there or is there any place kind of like that out there? If there is, I didn't see it. We were, we were when I tell you we were in the desert, we were in the desert. I mean, it was all open. There was no, like you're saying, there was none of that gift shops and gift things and explore this and do all this. It was literally just drive through the desert and just drive. It's a national park. Just drive through completely free. Nobody's selling anything. Nobody's doing anything. Nobody's touring. Nobody's guides. It's just all explore. I think they've done a really good job of keeping it, keeping it what it is. That's awesome. not turning it into just this tourist. Let's go do a bunch of cool things. Yeah. Let's just actually enjoy what it was created to be. Now, the one thing we did do was we go, we caught it. It was the aerial tramway. They have yeah. this. I don't know if you've ever been to, uh, what is it called? Um, in, like Anakista? Anakista, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to Anakista mm -hmm. where you kind of go up there in this little town. Similar thing, except for this one, you go up 8,500 feet in elevation and you are literally at the top of these mountains. Um, and instead of it being like an actual town though, it's one building where you can eat and do a couple things. They have a couple, like walk around, see some of the like fossils or see some of the plants and the, the animals. Um, but then it's just literally just trails. Like you literally just go out the back door and it's just walk around through the trails, which we didn't do because one thing you don't think about is when you get to 8,500 feet of elevation, it's harder to breathe. And yeah. so we literally, we climbed up one of the, the things to get like to the toppest ridge and we're sightseeing there and it was a lot of steps and we got back down and we're like, Ooh, I feel a little lightheaded. And yeah, so I was then, about to ask, did yeah. anybody kind of get some elevation sickness? Yes, yes, 100%. Not like actually sickness, but just like, hey, I've got a little bit of headache. Like I'm a little out of breath. We're like, maybe hiking, especially with a two-year-old isn't our best bet. Let's just stay off the trails and let's go back down. So it was absolutely beautiful. So we did Joshua's tree. We did the aerial tramway. Um, we did, oh, they have the Living Desert there, the Living Desert Zoo, um, okay. which is really cool because you actually feel like you're not in a zoo. You feel like you're in an actual desert with all the animals because they're literally, like I said, the mountains are in the backdrop. It's all desert. It's just, it's not a bunch of foliage and a bunch of, you know, done up things. Like we go to a typical zoo and they have to make these exhibits feel like you're in the safari or make you feel like you're in the rainforest there you don't have to because you're actually in the desert and yeah. so you just it just felt a little bit more real so it was really cool what was like the coolest animal you saw at the living uh was it the living <sighs> desert you yeah said? living desert living i desert mean too. the tiger was absolutely beautiful and it was like it was more of where it was at it was just kind of like laid out on this rock and it was just majestic and it was just staring right at us like it was just sitting there and just looking right at us that was probably the coolest animal um, because you just saw it. A lot of them were sleeping. I mean, it's the desert, so they're in the shade and they're they're sleeping. Um, the other cool one they had for the where like the Australian adventure was. Okay, it was like these. You couldn't get in. It was two doors. You couldn't get in the second door to get into the thing until the first one had closed because all the animals were just free. So there's a couple people in there making sure people aren't doing dumb stuff. But literally, the kangaroos are just hopping around all over your trail path. So we're like standing four feet. There's nothing separating us from this one. And it's literally jumping across. My wife has a video and it just pops right across the little pathway right there and just moves on. So that was pretty cool too. Dude, that's so cool. That was sick. Seeing a kangaroo like that close. Yeah. I don't know. I always I always think about now anytime I hear about like seeing a kangaroo that close is yeah. like the video of the, the kangaroo who like grabs the dog and then the guy like punches the kangaroo. Have you seen this? No. 
there's so there's a video that went viral it's been a few years now that it might have been like down in australia that there uh-huh. was a, a kangaroo who like grabbed some random hiker's dog while he was out there and the dude just walks up and punches the kangaroo yeah and so now i like can't even imagine a kangaroo jumping by without thinking of like kangaroo jack yeah, or like you. that yeah. mine or something like That's kangaroos hilarious. are just always ready to square up <laughs> They might be, huh? They might be. They might be. That's you get close enough. That's their whole thing. And they got hands. Out. So I don't want to find out. I don't, yeah, I don't think I don't think I would want to fight a kangaroo. Um, let's see what else did we do? Uh, we 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 played golf. Uh, the golf course there was on like there was three or four holes, literally up in the mountains. Ooh. absolutely beautiful, gorgeous sight. However, things like close weirdly early there. Like the golf course closed at like four thirty. What? So we showed up at three, thinking we had plenty of time to play eighteen, and they were like. No, the car's got to be back at 4.30. So we had to play like three holes and that was it. What? So that was kind of a bummer, but it was absolutely beautiful. But just all the views. I mean, even if you weren't doing anything, like that's the thing is we didn't do anything super extravagant. We went to the zoo. We went to Joshua Street, but it was a lot more just driving and sightseeing and just taking it in. It wasn't a whole lot of adventure and let me go do this and have to have this thrill. Just the beauty of it all was, was enough. Yeah, just appreciating yeah. where you're at. And then we, no, had, that's we cool. had a pool at the house we were staying at. So that, that's Fair nice, enough. you know, so... That works Saturday, so we'll transition. That'll be a good transition. Saturday, I had sold my wife on, listen, we're just going to have a day by the pool. We're just going to relax. Just We're not going to plan anything. We're just going to stay home, let you lay outside, get tan, and we'll just swim by the pool. And that turned into her and the daughter outside by the pool and Jonas inside at the TV watching college football because it was an incredible college football weekend. Yeah. Did you get to watch any? I watched I watched a good bit of college football this weekend. The my game of the week this week had to be that Notre Dame Ohio yeah. State game. Did you watch it? I'm down to the wire. Oh um, down to the wire. I sweated that one. That one that one had me go. I was rooting for Notre Dame hard. I was too. And I'm, I'm just a Notre Dame guy, but I'm like, I'll say. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so I just couldn't believe that Notre Dame couldn't move like Ohio State, everyone knows they put up points, right? They've always had these receivers, these quarterbacks, but their defense has never been – they've always had a good defense, but they've never been They usually have a crazy second. Yeah, and Notre Dame's offense is putting up points all year long. And for them to put up, what, 14 points? Yeah. Sad. And then, and then did you see on their last two plays, they, they had 10, 10 guys on the field? Mm. Like, what are y'all thinking, man? What are y'all thinking? <sighs> I didn't realize that at the time, obviously, until later on down, and then you start to see it on Twitter and stuff. That's – that's crazy. And then the coach says that they were trying to get the players out there. The guy, they wanted to get him out there, but they didn't want to risk penalty. But I'm like, who cares if you get a penalty? Like, you, they're going to move half the distance to the goal? Yeah, like, they were already is, on, like, the half the one yard line. Yeah, they're on the one-yard line. So what if you get half the distance to the goal and read down? There's three seconds left. Like, you're, they don't get – even if they got a brand-new first down, they can't run four plays if they wanted to. Like, yeah. there's one play here, and you do want ten men – for them to get one yard or 11 men for them to get half a yard. I'll take 11 men to get half a yard. Why yeah. would you not just take the penalty? I don't know, man. Dumb. Bad. He's, a, yeah, he's a young coach, though, isn't he? Is. He? he is. So it's, it's one of those things, like, he'll learn. I mean, he's only been there, what, two years? Is Brian Kelly's been gone? I wanted them to win that game so bad. I do like Sam Hartman, though. I do, too. I think he's going to be a good NFL QB. He just looks the part. I feel like more than anything, like, I was joking with my dad a couple weeks ago. to be ago, the guy, yeah. Like, Sam Hartman, Sam Hartman looks like he's been in the NFL for, like, eight years already. Yeah. Like he looks he looks like he's older than Justin Herbert, who's been in the league like four years. Like he just I don't know. Well they put up the graphic during the game and it was like Sam Hartman's experience versus Kyle McCord's experience and it was insane. Like you have Sam Hartman who's thrown like over a hundred touchdown passes for over ten thousand yards for over all these numbers, and you have Kyle McCord who's like not even in the thousands of yards, who it doesn't even have double digit touchdowns, who like and it was yeah. just like this is not even close, but I mean, that's what you get whenever you have. Like, it was a good game, though. That's all you can ask for. It was. It was. That's that's my early pick game of the year, even more so than Texas Bama. That Texas Bama game was fun. It was, but it didn't come down to the end. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's I agree. the. I, I texted my dad while I was watching that one and was like, "Turn on NBC right now." This is with like forty-five seconds left yeah. in the game. I was like, "Turn on NBC right now. Whatever game you're watching right now uh-huh. doesn't matter. This is like the early pick game of the year. There's an instant classic brewing." Are you guys Houston, Houston fans, like Cougars, Houston Cougars, or no? I mean, I, I like the Houston I Obviously, Cougars. you're a Wolves fan now, but like growing up, were you guys A&M, Texas Longhorns? So, Houston? growing up, I liked the Longhorns more than A&M, but I never had like, I never had like my, my diehard yeah. uh, team that I was always for. Like, I have a lot of family in Missouri, so I kind of like Mizzou. I like Chase Daniel, you know, Blaine Gabbert, guys like that. Blaine Gabbert rubbed me the wrong way a little bit last night, but... Uh, yeah, I liked Mizzou a little bit. My Texas team, I liked the Longhorns. 
Um, growing up in Houston, I, I rooted for the Cougars, but never really followed it. Gotcha. Uh, kind of thing. Then obviously I move out here and you know, you get ingrained with yeah, the culture yeah. real quick. And Texas looks good. Yeah. They, 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 they hammered Baylor. Good. They hammered them. Yeah. They look good. I was um, a um, what did you think about Alabama Ole Miss? Did you watch any of that game? I watched some of it. I honestly thought Ole Miss was going to pull it off. Uh, but Bama still got Jalen Milrow who, I mean, say I, what you will about him. Like he's still an Alabama quarterback and they're still Alabama. They'll find a way I, more often than not. I know people, they're waiting to just finally dismiss Alabama and Nick Saban completely. It's a mistake. And I know a lot of people thought after the Texas game, okay, there it is. You know, they're done for the year. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, man. I, I think they can figure it out. They look good. And I think they're just going to get better as the year goes on. I yep. would, I would, I would hesitate to throw them out of it for this year. Now there's a lot of good teams. Um, especially at the top, FSU, Clemson. Did you watch that game? Did you see I, that? Did I didn't see, see it. I didn't. I didn't see okay. the game, but I kicker. did. Like, I did see the score. Did you hear anything about the kicker? No. Let me tell you about this kicker. So this kid from Clemson comes in, and he has been there for four years, I believe. They talked about this at nausea. Like, it, they, by the time the game was over, I was like, I don't want to hear about this kicker ever again in my life. But they have this kicker from Clemson, and he had been there for like the last four years and was a backup. Never got to really start. I think he kicked like two or three kicks his entire career. So he finally realized, okay, I graduate, I'm done, walking away. They have a new kicker comes in this year, not doing so well. So they call this old kicker back up. I think Dabo Sweeney's son, like Ashley is the one who told Dabo, like, hey, you need to call him back up. I think he's available. We should see if he can come kick for us. He had he an extra in. year of NCAA eligibility. He had one last year of NCAA eligibility. He wasn't going to use it. So he comes back this week, earlier this week, preps, kicks really good at practice, and they put him in the game. So he's kicking for them for this game. Florida State Clemson score 28-28. They're driving with two minutes left. They get stopped. They have like a 25-30 yard field goal with a minute and a half left. Florida State has used all their timeouts. Everything. Here we go. Game on the line. This is this is it. If he makes this this kid, Hollywood script, right? That's what they're calling it. The, the announcers are just loving this. They're feeding up. Here it goes. This Hollywood in the making, the movie. This kid, four years as a backup, gets his final shot, comes in to win this game. Versus Florida State, all but seals the deal. Goes up, 25-yarder, misses. Oh! How's that for your Hollywood ending? Oh! And they're, like, showing in the booth, like, his parents and his, like, girlfriend no. and all that. And they're, like, putting the camera on them. And they're just, his mom is just devastated, you know? And you're just like, this is why you don't play this up so much. Because when he does miss, now it's this, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so now his kid has more spotlight on him than he ever should have had. Now he's definitely not going to the NFL. Definitely not. Oh, well, he wasn't going anyway, but he could have had a movie, maybe. Maybe. Catapulted into something. Not he would have kicked for them the rest of the year. He probably wouldn't do that. They could make a comedy. That's brutal. They could make That's a dark. comedy. That's dark humor right there. Maybe a little bit, but... That's dark humor. <laughs> you would enjoy that? I might, yeah. Come on, dog. I might. I'm not the biggest fan of, like, Rudy, so... <laughs> maybe. So that was tough. I felt I felt extremely bad for him. Obviously, Florida State comes back and wins the game. Florida State doesn't look good, but they're dealing with some injuries and stuff. I don't like Florida State, so I wanted them to lose that game. But I like Jordan Travis. I do like Jordan Travis. I'm not the biggest Florida State fan, but if it, uh, I'm a Florida State fan whenever they play the Gators. Let's talk about this. I know it was against Mississippi State. Okay. But Spencer Rattler looks so good. Dude. dude, 18 for 20 or something like that. He looks so like, good. He's the only guy on that team, man. He looks so good. Are you nervous for this weekend? I am, and I'm not at the same time. because I'm nervous because of what you said. Spencer Rattler looks good. And, I mean, he looked awful all last season until one random week at the end of the year whenever he looked like he should be the number one overall draft pick. And that always, I swear that always happens with South Carolina games and Tennessee. It's like, we get their best game of the year. Yeah. But maybe they already used that best game of the year. 18 for 20, he's not throwing 18 for 20 in back-to-back -back weeks. I. But is it going to take 18 and 20 to win? Because here's the thing, Mississippi State scored a lot of points. Yeah. yeah 30 something points. Can yeah. we do that? And Will Rogers is good. I think we can. I think we can. I think the reason I'm not worried is because of what happened last year and because of the Hendon Hooker injury. I think Josh Heupel is going to hype everybody up and make it like make it personal. I hope There's so. a lot of guys in that locker room. Florida should have been a personal game, though. Florida should have been a personal game, and I still haven't gotten over that one. I was Here's the very thing. mad. You expect to see, and they beat him by a lot, but it's UTSA. You expect to see after a loss like that for them to come out and just absolutely hammer and go crazy and bounce back. Yeah. And from what I heard, I didn't watch the game. I didn't okay. watch this UTSA game. There's a ton of other games. I didn't I didn't have access to it. 
Um, even if I did, I wouldn't have watched. But um, from what I heard, it was still a whole lot of screen passes. I mean, not as many as like the Florida game. As I'm many. The screen what about, passes what about just... against um, the game that I went to? Which one did you go to? Uh, why am I blanking? Did you go to Austin P versus Austin yes, P versus Austin P week two versus Austin P? There was a lot in that game. That one, that one was like it, it was like every. So other it wasn't player. that bad. No, no, it wasn't even close to that bad. No, first were we doing down the field? Yeah, yeah, we we had a handful that we threw down the field. A couple bad calls, a couple connections. Like it wasn't it wasn't that bad. I I get why some people are upset, but I don't think it was that bad. I thought Joe Milton played fine. I mean, the first play from scrimmage, he took off for an eighty-one yard touchdown. So give me your score prediction. Tennessee, score prediction, South Carolina. Tennessee, South Carolina this Saturday. I want to say Tennessee 34, South Carolina 28. You going? I wish. No, yeah. I'm not. You going to watch it? I, I will definitely be watching it. I'm going to watch but that too. more than anything, I'm going to be – Filming the the volunteer club tailgate before the game. Dude. That's something that uh, we've got a contract with them for the season. You've been talking to a lot of the players. Yeah, I've been hanging out with How's a couple of the players doing some Q&As and stuff. Uh, they're fun. I mean, like right now I've I've interviewed Amari Thomas and Jabari Small. Uh, great dudes. Fun to hang out with. Like it's just a fun Q&A type atmosphere. Man, you think if you were my true friend, we'd be having them on Cutting Up? I'll see what I can do next time. Next time I talk to them. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Didn't even mention this. We I mean, talk talked about it. it a little bit. Like little bit. most of it, most of it is like I read from the paper that the client gives us and ask questions back and forth, and then you know we deviate some. So I need to give you a paper. You get, okay? I mean, no, we don't do papers here. <laughs> we, don't we just we just free fall. We just free fall it. Yeah, yeah. We could. Uh, I mean, I could talk to them and see about it. I know, like just in season, it's hard for them to schedule, especially whenever we shoot. But we'll we can figure that. something. I mean, we can figure something out. I'm sure we could. Let's talk about your Chiefs. Okay. Let's talk about your Chiefs because they stole the show from the NFL. And More than the Dolphins, you think? I think so. Okay. Dude, how many times did the NFL post about the Chiefs game yesterday? Well, okay, we should clarify. Post about the Chiefs game or post about who was at the Chiefs game? They're one and the same. They're one and the same? Yes. Okay, then they posted a lot a about lot. that Chiefs game. More than the Dolphins who literally almost set an NFL record. Yeah, which was incredible. The Dolphins were seventy points in pro football. They're like, off, they're 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 so much fun to watch, dude. I didn't score seventy points in the game. We're, we're gonna before. save fantasy talk for Wednesday, but like I have decided, I think I'm just gonna do my best to acquire as many Dolphins players as I can this <laughs> fantasy season. And I want my fantasy team to be the Ch- the Chiefs, or not the Chiefs, the 49ers and the Dolphins. If they can be those two, I, I'm just going to collect a, a collection of those two. Could teams. be a Super Bowl matchup. They, honestly, their offense is so fun to watch, and it could be because McDaniel is from San Francisco that that. You know, oh, is he really? That's right. Yeah, he was their offensive coordinator. But, uh, dude, Dolphins are so much fun. They're so fast. They're just, they have so many guys with so much speed and they're so much fun. But, and Waddle didn't even play, did he? Didn't even play. Yeah, that's didn't crazy. Even play. Um, but your Chiefs have stolen it. Dude, I think I saw this. I don't know if it was real or not. I need, I should have checked it, but I was scrolling through it on Twitter or something. And literally, the NFL, the NFL's official TikTok page in their bio said, Taylor was here or something like that. Something of that effect. It was in the NFL bio. That's insane. No way. This is the biggest sport in the world. The biggest day on a Sunday for this biggest sport in the world. And they're all talking about Taylor Swift. They're posting about everything. That's crazy. I mean, it makes sense because obviously she was there to support Travis Kelsey, whatever. They got a thing going on. But also the NFL is always trying to just like cast that net a little bit more, grab a few more fans here and there, whatever, whatever it takes. Right. Because if you can get more fans, then they'll tell their friends and they'll go watch it and it just grows the brand. And I'm sure there wasn't a lot of crossover between the the Swifties fans and the NFL. And then, boom, here's that crossover. The NFL is going to try to absorb as many of those. people. I would like to see the number. I, I would like to see the numbers for the Chiefs game on like the viewership, how many people tuned in to watch versus other games. So once I, I once they announced that Taylor was there, it probably jumped. I would love to see the difference. From but the then, time. dude, yeah. they took it off the air at halftime because it was such a beat down. Yeah. Like I was watching it at the house and I don't have Sunday ticket or anything, but I was watching it at the house and then um, at halftime, a uh, guy comes on and is like, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching the Chiefs game, but the Chiefs have got this under control, so we're going to take you out to Arizona. 
to watch the Cardinals and Cowboys. I just think it's absolutely crazy when an NFL at that at the level of what the NFL is, when at that level that coaches and players start to freestyle and just start, you know, whether it's testing things or just trying to do something. I mean, it's it's so disrespectful in a way because they literally in the NFL, not too many times do you get to deviate from this is our game plan, this is what we're gonna do. We have to execute this to the best of our ability to even win. And then when you start to see people kind of veer off that path and start to freestyle, it's it's kind of crazy. But when they're on purpose, Andy Reid is calling play specifically for Travis Kelsey to get him the ball. Patrick Mahomes says in the post-game interview, I knew I had pressure on me to get Patrick Mahomes a touch or Travis Kelsey a touchdown. That's crazy the impact that she had on that game. Yeah. And how many people watched? And so just the overall attention that was on it. You know what I mean? I mean there was people literally arguing whether or not Taylor Swift was bigger than the NFL, which she's not, but Dalton. She's not Dalton. she's not bigger than the NFL. Dalton. But she's Care. probably one of the biggest things in America that isn't the NFL. I would agree with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she's A list of A list. Absolutely. Well, and it's it's one of those that like, no, she's not as big as the NFL, but she's really, really big, probably the biggest thing that isn't the NFL, with not a lot of crossover between her people who are yeah. fans of football and fans of her. Oh, the NFL is going to eat it up for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They'll have the camera on her every week. Every, if she's at the game, if she's at the game, the there. See, be this is what makes me mad though. I don't want to be talking about Taylor Swift during the portion of the time we're supposed to be talking about the NFL. Talking about football, right? It's crazy. She's in. She's interfering here. How many sports podcasts, ESPN, everything this week has to mention and talk about Taylor Swift? I can almost guarantee you, if you turn on Pat McAfee show on ESPN, they're going over. They're it talking like, about right it. now. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I guess it's good for the game. Do you it's, think it's good for do you as a Chiefs? As fan, a Chiefs fan, I'm, I'm all about it. My 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 one my one thing is, and I was telling my buddy Jacob about this yesterday, is I was like, what I don't want is for this to end badly. And then there's a whole like Taylor Swift breakup album about Travis Kelsey. That's what I really don't want as a big time Travis Kelsey fan. And so I hope everything goes smooth and I hope they live happily ever after. Can you talk about my Steelers for one second before we wrap up here? Sure. They looked good last night. They looked really good, dude. I was happy. After two bad weeks, like bad against the Niners, I watched Monday Night Football in Arizona, or I keep saying Arizona, in Palm Springs. And it was brutal. It was not a fun watch. We won that game against the Browns, but it was not a fun watch. We didn't. I did not let, leave thinking that our offense had gotten any better than they did week one, and that's really bad. Man, we looked good last night, dude. Yeah. I don't know if the Raiders are just that bad. I don't think they are. I don't care. I'm always just happy watching the Raiders lose. I just we were moving the ball. Pickett looked like he he could make decisions. That was the thing. He wasn't yep. making decisions in the la- the first two games. He was just getting destroyed by pressure and just looked like he was lost the entire time. He actually looked like there was a game plan. He looked like he was able to see the open route, see things develop, make smart plays. We looked good. I'm yeah. excited. I'm back on the bus. I was I was nervous going into last night. I thought there was a chance we could lose, and it would look really – because people are calling for Matt Canada, which I'm not a big Matt Canada fan. People are calling for Matt Canada's head. People are calling for – Kenny Pickett might not be the guy. You know, Deion, or George Pickens can't get separation, yada, yada, yada. All these offensive line is really bad. Mike Tomlin's not that good of a coach. And so wait, are people saying Mike Tomlin's not that good of a coach? Dude, people are always saying Mike that's Tomlin. a hideous. Can you take. believe that? Yeah, that's an that's, awful take. Yeah, that, that no, it, it's a real take. What people 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 think that he gets a lot of over what's the word for it? People think that he is I don't want to say overvalued, but that he gets some more credit because of the fact that he's never had a winning season. Or there was a losing season. That's, I mean, he should get a lot of credit. What the haters will say, and I love Mike Tom, but I hope he's a serious coach forever. Yeah. What the people on the other side of it will say is, okay, he may have never had a losing season, but when's the last time they won a playoff game? Yeah, that's a difficult one. When's the last time they were in the Super Bowl? But they also, you guys also like hitched the wagon to Big Ben for a couple years too long. But a lot of people think that that's the only reason why Mike Tomlin's even relevant. It's because, it's because of Ben Roethlisberger? Because without Ben, he's not going to play that game. Who was his quarterback before Ben They've been terrible like, Well, he, he wasn't there. When he got inherited with Big Ben, he came in and Big Ben was already the quarterback. Yeah, so that's not but his. Since then, I mean, he's taken guys like Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett and them and gotten them to have winning seasons, which I think is I think amazing. Kenny Pickett will be the guy for a while. The the problem, my problem with a lot of just like NFL and football fandoms is like you expect the guy who takes the reins to be him and show up and prove it and like have this moss opus immediately as soon as he's there 
and like and you want it every single week to be like madden numbers yeah and that's just not that's the big not thing realistic. for me was i just wanted okay last year he came in i didn't expect a lot from him and he did i thought he did really well last year he was a game manager he made smart plays he won us a lot of games but we relied on the defense to do a lot of and that's okay that's what we're gonna do yeah i just wanted to see a step forward where it's okay we sat in a whole off season he's had a whole season he is the guy Let's just, I don't need him to be the next Joe Burrow, the next Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence right off the bat. Let's just see a step forward. Let's just make that him above lead. Justin Herbert, me personally. I, I hope so. I hope so. Um, and week one and two, he just didn't make that step. He looked the same kind of confused and lost that he did we, his rookie season, where he looked like a rookie last They also week. played in week one a really good they Niners did. team. They did. They did. And then he had to line up against Miles Garrett in week he two. Yeah. Like it's... Those are that's well, that's, that's a decent thing is that the Steelers are we're not going to be okay with just being mediocre. We're never going to be okay with just seven and eight or eight and seven or the, whatever it is. You know, the kids you, in year two, I not, know, like but we want to compete for Super Bowls. And if you're going to compete for Super Bowls, you have to at least compete against the Niners and you have to at least look good against the Browns. Like those are teams you have to beat if you want to be on that level. We don't want to be in the middle of the pack. That's fair. And I don't think they, I don't think they will finish middle of the pack. I don't think they're going to win that division this year though. I think we have a chance. I think, you, I think you have a chance. It's, it's wide open. But. Unfortunately, Nick Chubb is out. Yeah. Bengals do not look good. We're going to see what happens tonight. Yeah. They lose tonight. They're 0-3, and Joe Burrow is dealing with a calf issue. This could get bad. Yeah, that really could get quickly. Real bad. And the Ravens lost last, yesterday to the Colts without Anthony Richardson. Oh, I didn't see that one. Yeah. On now. I didn't see that one. For the Colts without Anthony Richardson. Oh. And without Jonathan Taylor. They lost to Zach Moss and Gardner Minshew, bro. The division is available. That's and that's why I need to see a game like last night where it's like, okay, we can win this division. Because before that, it was like, dude, this division is open and we can't even take it. Now I feel like we can take it. Yeah, I mean, they absolutely could. But I think, I think the more, hmm. how do I word this? I think the reason that I feel like they could as strongly as I do is because of Mike Tomlin, not because of of Kenny Pickett and George Pickens and Najee Harris. I think of, I feel that way because of Mike Tomlin. He's going to get the boys ready. You know, I, I I think he's just a good head coach. He's I can't believe that people don't think he's a good head coach. Yeah. That's just... But dumb. who are people? I mean, this is... I, I don't think the Steelers are actually considering ever replacing him. Yeah, I think people around the league know Mike Tomlin's a good coach. It's just the random guys on Twitter that are trying yeah. to get clicks. Mike Tomlin's off. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, that's ridiculous. Mike ridiculous. Tomlin's Mike Tomlin's a great head so. coach. Now, I was talking last night about that game, though. And I was like, I was joking around with a with a buddy, and I was like, this is one of those games that Mike Tomlin just always wins, and that's how he always has a winning season. Yes, is like, dude, there's just random games like they could look really bad in week one, and then randomly in week three they play a team on the road that's pretty favored. Yep, and they win, and, and they just, they just win convincingly. Yep. Like it's random, just like spurts like do. that. That's what we do. Yeah, and then they give me to buy all the way back in just for my heart to get broken later. Hey Amen. It's. But I think we have some favorable matchups. I want to say we play like Texans. We can play this weekend. I, want, I think we play Houston. We might play Houston or we might play like Jacksonville. But Jacksonville doesn't look that good. Houston's right not going to be great this year. But Houston looks like they're putting the, the pieces together. Think so? Yeah, I think so. I think, think Stroud's the man? I think Stroud can be the man. <laughs> I think he's more of the man for them than Davis Mills was. Um, so we have... We have Houston this week, and okay. then we have Baltimore, division rival. I think we could win that game. Yeah. Then we get a bye week. Okay, then out of the bye week, we get the Rams and the Jaguars. Now, the Rams have been surprising. Oh, and then the Titans, and then Green Bay. So, we've got a little bit of a That's a pretty with. favorable schedule, really. You should be able to win on those next five, three, at least. At least, if yeah. not four, and I, maybe five. I mean, are the Pittsburgh Steelers going to be seven and two? Week nine? Week ten? It's not impossible. I wouldn't say it's impossible. Now it is also the NFL, and like the Detroit Lions can come out and beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Like what? But Lions are good. They are good. I'm just a hater. Don, we got some exciting guests coming up, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we got some fun ones on the horizon. You heard some names. We're yeah. gonna we're locking them in, and we got some good episodes for you guys. So stay tuned, um, and hopefully the Vols get a win this week against South Carolina. Yep. People are nervous. I'll be very hyped up if we do. Be very hyped up. Yeah. And so yeah, stay tuned. We got some great guests coming on. Thank you guys for listening. As always, like, share, subscribe, and we'll be back next week, same time, with uh, with the guest. So, peace out.